In this review, I'm looking at iFire's Zen DAC. Now, the Zen range has a similar form factor, as you will see if you look at my review of the Zen Blue, which is a Bluetooth DAC that has a similar shaped chassis, and it has those funny little oldy-worldy curves. You can see the review itself. I put a link up yonder there. The Zen range has a small factor and an accompanying small price. We're only looking at £129 here. Other Zen items are promised in the future. I've heard talk of a specialist analog headphone amp on the way and also a phono amp. Now this is a USB DAC and it can be powered by USB. It can also be powered by an external wall water power supply. Now that wall water power supply is not included and that's one of the reasons that iFi is able to keep the price down. That said, if you do want to buy yourself a wall water power supply from iFi, you can do that and you can hook it up. Now in the sound tests, I will be testing the Zendak with and without a wall water power supply. I'll be comparing it to the USB power supply and seeing which one sounds best. Just in case you're thinking, well, you know, should I buy a, an external power supply or not? Well, hopefully those sound tests will help you to make that purchase decision. So before we get to those sound tests, let's take a closer look at the Zendak itself. And welcome to the closer look section of this review, where we get a little bit up close and personal with the hardware in question. And what you can see in front here is the Zen DAC. This particular DAC is based around a bare brown DAC chip, plus some custom circuitry, especially created for iFi. The hardware itself handles PCM native DSD and also MQA. And if you're talking numbers, then you're looking at 32-bit 384 in terms of PCM. DSD ranges up to 256. The included XMOS chip processes audio data received at the USB input stage and is programmed in-house. Rather than relying on firmware supplied off the shelf, i5's continuous software development allows features to be added or optimized via firmware updates. Actually, the iFi DAC can be tailored to your playback priorities. You can even download and install different versions of iFi's firmware to experiment with different digital filters. Clock locking is used throughout the digital stage to reduce jitter and parts include a custom iFi op-amp, TDK-C0G Class 1 ceramic capacitors, and a low noise power supply IC from Texas Instruments. So there's an awful lot going on in here. The headphone stage, and you can see a 6.35 unbalanced socket just there, and a balanced socket to the right of it, has a switchable gain called power match, and you can just see that here. You switch that to a low setting for in-ear monitors, while on or over-ear designs will need the power match to provide a higher gain. Next to that, you can see the true bass button, and that's basically a bass boost. This 4.4 millimeter output enables you to connect the DAC to amps and active speakers equipped with a balanced input. Single-ended RCAs are also provided. They can be switched between variable and fixed. Now, as you can see, the switch is in variable mode right now, but if I just flick that over to fixed, then that bypasses the volume control, fixing the output to 4.2 volts in balance mode or 2.1 volts in single-ended for connection to an external preamp or integrated amplifier. The Zendax USB 3 Type-B input supports the USB 3 standard, as you might expect, but also USB 2. It's an asynchronous connection, meaning that the data rate is regulated solely by Zendax audio clock circuitry. Now, behind the volume control, which is this big knob here, resides an LED that changes color to indicate the sampling rate of the audio data received. Now, with the Zen Blue, which I've also reviewed, and I'll put a link up here somewhere, you will notice the aesthetics are, well, quite unique to the Zen series. It has that sort of Art Deco sideboard look, but without the legs. But in this case, you'd have trouble keeping a vase of flowers on it, because, as you can see, 
it's quite dinky, measuring 117 by 100 by 30 millimeters and weighs a mere 491 grams. Now, this thing is currently asleep. So, let's power it off. Let's see all the lights flashing and the bells and the whistles, shall we? Ta-da! Uh, yeah, well, it is actually on. And you can just see the cable just to the left there. But, uh, yeah, well, actually, you know it's on because, um, well, <clears throat> when that little light glows green. Subtle, isn't it? Now, in a desperate attempt to give the Zen DAC some appearance of life, I've hooked the DAC up to my laptop, and you can just see the... Where is it? There it is. There's the USB cable just sticking up at the back. That's now connected to my laptop, and I'm playing a ripped WAV file from a CD. So if I press the power match button, that will now light up. Hurrah! And also true base. And that lights up. So we have a little bit of visible life. Now, the LED I mentioned, which sits behind the volume control, is a little subtle when you look at it directly. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn down my lights. And let's see what we can see when I turn the lights right down. Now, the lights will go down and you will see the camera desperately trying to compensate for the poor light. So the lights will go down and then the camera will adjust and the lights will go up again. But hopefully we'll see, well, we're looking for a green glow around the circumference of the volume knob, which is here. So here we go. Let's lower those lights now. Down they go. And you can just see that glow just around here. Let me just tilt. There we go, you see? So that is your WAV file. So let's leave the lights down for now and let's pick a different type of file. And when I say a different type of file, I mean something which is not PCM. As you can see here, the volume light LED is now glowing blue and that's because I'm now playing a DSD file. Here we are, you can see a little bit better here. So let's up the lights once more. Let's let the camera adjust. And as you can see, the Zendark from i5 is nothing if not subtle. Now this is a good thing, I say, because if you want the information, if you want to see what's active, then you can see it. If you want to, you can find out. But this thing is not in your face. It's not going to blind you with searing lamps. And I applaud that. I like that. There are far too many DACs out there, and I reviewed one from Songcos only recently, which, even though some of these lights are small, are intense and non-dimmable. So I applaud iFire's approach here to go subtle. So let's just go through them again. We have a subtle backlight here. We have a couple of lights here, and that's only if you're engaging them in the first place. And, not that you will see it as you're sitting in your listening room, you have a tiny power light, the green one just on the right there. And that's it. Nothing else is in your face. So in terms of day-to-day -day operation, it sits there, it's low-key, it does the job. I like that. I approve. In design terms, this DAC stroke headphone amplifier is simple and to the point. But is the sound? Well, let's do some sound tests and let's find out. And welcome back to the sound test. So you've seen the Zen DAC up close. How does it perform during the actual sound tests? Well, I began with a bright, hard-edged CD rip from the pop outfit, The Sugar Babes, and a track called Blue. This is high energy, it's bass heavy, soul pop. And any DAC tackling this lot has to get its backside into gear pretty pronto. Why? Well, translating this sonic mess into something more civilized is a bit of a job. I played the file through my MacBook via Audivana Plus and used my reference HD 800 headphones through the 6.35 millimeter socket for this test. And that sound response? Blimey, there was serious bass here, almost too much. 
The presentation was focused and precise, yes, but the bass was super dominant, front and centre. The vocals tended to peep around the sides of the bass, a bit like seeing someone's head pop around the corner of a wall. You see more wall than human being. Vocals were distinct though, there was enough clarity for the diction to remain clear, while the synth runs were recognisable and the shy acoustic guitar strums in the chorus were there, although squashed against those walls of the soundstage. Ever see the classic old Oscar winning Humphrey Bogart film Casablanca? Remember one of the baddies in that one, played by the extra large Sidney Greenstreet? Big, big guy. He walked into the room and he became the room, which was his physical bulk. Here, bass was Sidney Greenstreet. And then I looked again at the front fascia and literally saw the light. And you will have seen the light as well during the closer look section. Because when I turned on the DAC and I got it up and running and I put the headphones on and I was listening to this pop track, I didn't realise that the true bass option, this is the bass boost, was defaulted to on. So if you grab one of these DACs, just have a quick look at true bass before you listen to your music. Because right from the off, I wasn't aware of this to begin with, but I was listening to bass boost. So anything I've just said a minute ago, that's the effect it gives. It's big, it's too much, I don't like it, I switched it off for the rest of the review. Bass after a course of Weight Watchers, you might say. Sydney Greenstreet transformed into Twiggy before my very ears. Bass was chagrined because it stepped back into line, became part of the mix once more and reduced its force to a mere tonally balanced part of the soundstage, which is what it should have been all of the time. So with this EQ turned off, bass retained its impact and strength, it didn't lose any power, but again it formed a firm foundation for the entire song. It created a rhythmic impetus for the music and acted as a grammatical punctuation to the vocal performance. With true bass off, the air and space was better infused into the soundstage. This air meant that the strummed guitar provided a greater part of the chorus instrumentation, giving that part of the song sparkle and upper mid-range life, contrasting with those lower frequencies. Before, with the true bass on, there was no contrast, it was all bass. The soundstage also allowed the secondary percussion to push forwards, adding complexity to the percussion as a whole. I then switched headphones and I took the HD 800s away and I stayed with Sennheisers, but this time I used a pair of 660Ss with a Pentacon cable option. Now playing the 660s via Pentacon did what balanced connections often do. It raised the volume for the same gain, so down went the gain. Bass was fattened here, strengthened and pushed towards the ear a tad, adding to the overall tonal balance. That push didn't swamp any of the mid-range detail though. Instead, the bass enhancement underpinned the mid-range. It gave it confidence. It gave it strength. This output also pushed the soundstage left and right, providing more space for the mid-range detail to work within. Now keeping the 660S headphones in place, I merely swapped the cable. I took away the Pentacon off the 660s and instead I just replaced it with a basic single-ended 6.35mm and I did a quick AB comparison between the two cable connections. With the Pentacon gone and the 6.35 single-ended in, the bass retreated. Noise increased just a tad, very slightly, but enough to prevent you upping the gain to search for those elusive upper mid-range details. Now I must add, to this point, I had been using the Zen DAC via a USB powered cable. So all of the music I'd been hearing had been powered by a USB cable and that cable was attached to my laptop. Now laptops are notoriously noisy and that doesn't help sound quality. Now, let me quickly preface this by saying that iFi kindly supplied me with something called the iPower. This is a wall wart, but it's a bit tweaked and inherently it has a lower noise floor than your basic common or garden wall wart. So this particular wall wart will perform that much better than a bog standard model. 
That's what I used from iFi. I'll put a link below so you can see that for yourself. So with the eye power in place, the tonal balance improved by a magnitude. In what way? Well, lowering the noise floor allowed more mid-range detail to be tracked by the ear. My favorite shy guitar strums now manifested itself to a fully formed acoustic guitar performance instead. The guitar had a great overall presence now. Vocals now offered a softer presentation infused with emotion and slightly more fragility and finesse. More of the lyrics could be understood too. Bass was also less aggressive. There was even more organic flavor to the drum machines, which was quite unexpected. I then moved to something a little bit more high res and jazz and Sonny Rollins with the track St. Thomas. This was a file that was pushed through at 24 bit 96K. The detail enhancement was more noticeable in this jazz outing from Sonny Rollins. It provided enough space around the soundstage for the complex percussion sequences to be heard in toto, while the upright bass acted as a firm foundation to the track overall. Rollins' expansive sax work also didn't swamp the playful yet restrained piano. It was easy for the piano to be tracked throughout by the ear. Bass never bloomed and masked this area, thank goodness. I then turned to DSD and a track by Eric Bibb called Meet Me at the Building. This one was DSD 128. This track was calm, collected and easy paced and offered plenty of focus. This song offers a veritable crowd scene of voices and instruments, all analog in nature. Yet the Zen provided a calm rendering of the soundstage. You could let the whole experience wash over you, or if you wished, pick out every detail within. The DSD experience was smooth. The music flowed very easily indeed. I then connected the Zendak to my Kanto powered speakers, flipped the Zendak to variable mode so that it was in preamp mode. So basically the Zendak acted as a preamp for the Kanto powered speakers. I could of course have switched the DAC to fixed mode and allowed the speakers to control the volume because the speakers also have a volume control. The choice is yours. I found that allowing the Zen to control the volume was preferable in sonic terms. The Zen provided more immediate and finer volume changes. Now as a preamp and DAC combined, the Zen proved to be a wholehearted winner. The relative low noise performance provided a clean and open overall presentation, no matter what genre of music you push through it. Bass was lively, nimble and punchy, while the upper frequencies benefited from the low noise around the soundstage, enhancing the accuracy from the guitars and honing vocal delivery. Actually, after a while, I even forgot I was reviewing this part of the setup and just listened to the music, which is always a good sign. So there's an awful lot going on with this iFi Zen DAC. You've got the preamp option, the fixed and variable outputs there. You've got the Pentacon option on the back and on the front. And I know of an awful lot of very expensive DACs that don't offer Pentacon, and they should. But this one is only priced at 129, don't forget. Now I'd like to ask iFi how on earth they do it. I thought the new breed of Chinese hi-fi brands were the low cost specialists here, but apparently not. And those Chinese brands don't reach the high finish quality that iFi provides here. Of course, the glitz and glamour would be nothing without the great sound. And let me assure you, the Zen offers great sound. This is a quality bit of kit, but hey, what more would you expect from iFi? So a thumbs up all round, and I heartily recommend the iFi Zen DAC. And I can't wait to find what else iFi do in Zen terms. These are all low priced, small footprint, high sound quality items, and I heartily welcome their entrance into the market. But that's me done. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video and I hope to see you in the next one. I just want to thank you very much for supporting this channel, for subscribing and also for liking these videos, which then helps me to do these videos in the first place, hopefully bringing the information to you that you need. I'd love your company in the next video. That will be Tuesday, probably something vinyl and CD related for Tuesday. Until then, 
Bye-bye for now.